Skylar. We are going to talk about pixel pitch and what that means in terms of not really resolution, but more to do with, I would say, sharpness of the image. Is that? Maybe, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, pixel pitch is, uh, is one of those kind of can be difficult topics. Yeah. Because the way that we've been trained in the industry, so to speak, just even as consumers, is first, what is the resolution? Like that's where we we start. Yeah. Like what's the resolution of this display? Yeah. And uh, and and that's not the way that micro LED works. The reason why is because what we're dealing with is a custom display that has a pixel density that can change, and the change of the changing of that pixel density has nothing to do with the size of it. Right. Right. The pixel density itself comes from the panels and how each of those panels, how tightly packed those pixels are. So like this is a 1.2 millimeter display. We have 0.9, we have some smaller than that. We have a 1.5, we have a 1.9, we have 2.5 and we go, it goes up from there, right? So what that does for, for the user is gives you a, an all, like all sorts of different options for what you can put into your space but it really all comes back to something that has to be relatable, like not resolution, but you know, what does this look like in my room, right? And so uh, like Steve Jobs, for instance, you remember when he launched the iPhone, he launched the iPhone and he said, you know what, we're gonna put a number of pixels in this, but we're not going to exceed it. Why? Because it's the most pixels we can put in before your eye cannot perceptively see any difference. And that's the same rule that we use at just video walls with deter determining pixel pitch. And here's where the problem, the problem lies or the gotcha lies. Nobody else has a methodology or a systemized way of predicting where that's going to be for your experience in your home. Everybody has a different method. Some people say, we'll use the 10X rule. Take the pixel pitch, multiply it by 10, and then that's how far away you need to be. But the problem is it's all just arbitrary and there's no real like data that backs that up or science to tell you, okay, like when I'm standing this far away, like, is this going to be the right experience for me? And the last thing that you want to do is put in a, you know, pixel pitch with whatever it is in a person's home and then invest good money into a display, but then not be happy with the end result because they can see pixels from where their main viewing right. position is. Exactly. Right? That's a disaster zone. <clears throat> and again, this was a problem we experienced. We didn't understand how our, like, what's the science behind this? And no matter what we did, it was like everybody had a different rule. So we decided that we have to go back and figure out, okay, like, what, at what point do these pixels actually disappear? So we, we figured out the math for that. Um, it's based on arc minutes, like if you want to look that up. But it's, it's the same concept as going into a doctor's office and eye doctors. And you see on the chart, you see like, okay, here's these numbers, these letters, and so on and so down until you can't distinguish the difference anymore. And so based on 2020 vision is where our tool recommends the right pixel pitch for that particular distance. So what you do, Dream Media, for your customers, you say, okay, where are you going to be viewing this from? And how far away is that? And from there, you work backwards into the pixel pitch as a result, not a starting position. Right. So what does that do for the specification of the wall? Well, it takes a wall like this and it eliminates resolution from the conversation. So no longer am I specifying a 4K wall or an 8K wall. I'm specifying the distance at which the pixels disappear or the distance at which resolution no longer matters, in other words. So if you put it, if you want to think of it this way, it's the distance at which a display becomes the same as a 4K resolution experience, right? And this is a difference between like micro LED and the pixel density on a TV. So a TV has like, I can be here and look at the TV and I can see no pixels usually, depends on how big it is. So if I'm backing up and like most people are 10 feet away, 15 feet away from their TV sometimes on the wall and I'm looking at it, if I add pixels to that TV, 
it's not doing a single thing to benefit my experience at all. Right. So the 8K revolution, the 4K revolution, like that doesn't matter in terms of overall experience unless I'm so close to those that viewing surface that I can actually distinguish those those pixels. Mm -hmm. So the, in in micro LED, that's the rule. Is like we start there and then we say, okay, based on where the pixels certain for certain disappear a 2020 vision. How, cl how much closer can I be and it still be an acceptable experience? And from that point, it's subjective, right? So like, I may say that like, here's based on this wall at 14 feet for a 1.2 is where it disappears. Yep. But I may say that I can actually stand like here and still be, still find it as a perfectly yeah, acceptable. Whenever I was standing like right, I still have to look really hard and it has to be like a bright white. Like I can barely see the pixels in that little right. header right there. Yeah, which, and that comes down to more than just like what my eye can see. It comes, it comes down right. to content. It, I mean, if I'm right. sitting this close, I'm I'm missing what's going on over there anyways. Right. So it's, it's well like, on this yeah <laughs> on this wall for right. sure. Yeah. yeah. Like it, and that that gets into a whole other right. territory. Viewing angle, right. sight line. Which is how mess. big of a wall do I need based on how close exactly. I am to. Yeah. But you're right, like, you know, this content is fairly static in the text, right? So if you're if this is the kind of content you're you're watching, or let's just say that you're watching like it maybe you have a business use case, right? And so what you see on your wall most of the time is spreadsheets. Yeah. Now, if I see spreadsheets most of the time on my wall, I need I need those pixels to disappear because I don't want to see the aliasing. I don't want to see any of those all day, every day as I'm crunching Excel sheets. Yeah. Whereas if I'm just showing video, like even like we'll pop up a Kaleidoscape on here and we'll show you what it looks like, like from this distance so you can see. Like, video is a completely different experience. Like, I can't see the pixels from the same distance on video that I can on an Excel sheet. Rather than right? a static image. Yeah, so we always start with the known factor. We start with a known factor where the pixels disappear. And that's a scientific formula that we calculate on all of the walls that we do. So that way you know exactly where they're gonna disappear. And then we use a subjective measure saying like typical users say that I can be X number of feet away and still find this perfectly acceptable image. And so that's the, that's, that's the, the right way to do micro LED, not based on 4K or 8K, because you're honestly gonna buy more wall that you need than you need. Like we can do a 0.7 pixel pitch mm -hmm. and we can get you 4K on a small wall but you're gonna spend three to four times more on that, even if you're never even using those pixels. Yeah. Right? And then you also have to have more processing power to drive those pixels. You have to have more cables, you have to run more everything to do that. So we, we want to get the right wall for the right environment, not just try to max out every single spec that we possibly can.